The S&Ps are up 16 and a half. Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Ord from the Ord Oracle. Now, Tim is on every Thursday, folks, at 20 past the hour. Uh, I'm not going to be here tomorrow, so we're uh, going to have him on uh, today. Uh, you can reach Tim, though, every trading day at ord.oracle.com. Tim Ord, what's going on? Well, it's uh, thanks for having me on again. You know, we talked, um, I don't know, a week or two ago, we were talking just kind of between you and I, and how he says, you know, the market bottoms on panic, and I got some indicators uh, to show that. Yes. I don't know if you remember that conversation or yes. not. So when everybody's running away from the market and, you know, they're scared, uh, they're scared, you really should go towards the market. But you got to really find where that panic is. There's a little bit of panic, and there's a lot of panic. Yes. And the, the ideal situation is find the most panic you could buy, uh, the most panic you can find and buy in that area. I don't know if you remember this. Back, I think, in 1998, uh, we were on the radio. I remember and, in July. Yep. <laughs> it, we were, I think it was in September was it 1998. Yeah, it was September. Yeah. So it started in July. Okay, right. Yes. Yeah. It, and anyway, I think it was September, and we were on the radio. Uh, uh, that was back then. I think you were on uh, the uh, internet radio or something. You know, you had a program going on. Yeah, no, it was regular kind of radio. It was AM radio, also, right? Exactly. Yeah, right. Okay. So anyhow, it was about half hour to the close, and anyhow, uh, I was messing around with uh, ticks at that time, a little bit of ticks, and still kind of learn about how that trend works. But anyhow, the ticks were going, I don't know, 1,100, 1,200, 1,500 down tick readings. It was about a half hour before the close. And I remember telling you, this is, uh, I, I got to get off the, the line or the phone here. Yep. Because uh, I'm going to buy some call options. Right. <laughs> and then, uh, so anyhow, that was, I don't remember what day that was or anything, but I think and, it was and what the And this week. is what happened, folks. And yeah. I didn't remember this so well, Tim. And what happened is that's when Ben, uh, no, it was, that's when Greenspan and uh, Ruben came on the TV at approximately, I don't know, about 3.30, and they brought the interest rate down two points or something. Yeah. And that was the end of the Asian contagion. Right. That, that was amazing. Right. Right. That was, that was about yeah. as intense as you can get. I was because I right. was screaming because I was still shot, Tim. I remember because that's when we were trading live on the air, and I was screaming, "It's not fair! It's not fair!" I was you know, talking about being naive, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, that turned out to be the bottom, and the market pretty yes. much went vertical yes, right did. after it that. Um, yeah, I mean, it really turned around in a hurry. I don't know exactly that time, but within you know that, that before the close, I think the close is pretty much the bottom. And the market really took off over the next several days. But it did. anyhow. So which, um, which chart do you want me to bring up first? Well, do, uh, do uh, chart number one. And um, and this is kind of looking at the bigger view. This this chart goes back to, uh, oh, I don't know, mid-2017. The bottom window is a 6-3-day Six three day average of the trend. Yes. The next window up is a hundred day average of the trend. Okay. And what the trend is is the up volume divided by or the up advancing issues divided by the up volume. Divide that by the declining issues divided by the declining volume. Yes. And so it, it's kind of it takes volume into consideration and also uh, the advanced decline. And so. What it kind of does is measures the volume on the advanced issues, it measures the volume on the declining issues. And what your ideal situation, you want the volume to really hit on the declining issues because that will drive the trend way up in, you know, like one or two or, or three if you get lucky. Yes. And that's when everybody's panicking. And so and that's an ideal situation to find panic because when everybody's on one side of the fence, you want to get on the other side of the fence. And the trend is, is a good indicator of finding where that panic is. Uh, so on these bigger time frames, it seems to work pretty well when you got a, a trend reading for the six, three days. Well, six, three days is actually three months. It's kind of close enough anyhow. Okay. And you get a trend reading around 1.1, 1 .1, or you get 100, or you get both around 1.1. 1 .1, it's usually a good sign for intermediate term. And, and that's the uh, shaded blue areas. 
on okay, that chart. Okay, I see that. Yep. And and so over the last uh, this this chart's current today. Uh, so over the last uh, well, started basically in January. If you notice, <clears throat> the, the, the six three day and the hundred day trend are pretty much in the panic area, especially right now. And so if you look at the chart on the SPYs above, you're kind of round off numbers around the 400 level. Uh, so it's a good sign that on a bigger time frame, you had it back in, and it uh, looks like about well, my site, it, or about May to November, pretty much, you had it, uh, a high trend reading. Then in December, you kind of fell back down, and basically from January on, you've been pretty much in a panic level. Uh, and in general, you've been in panic level since uh, last May. You really haven't gone anywhere right. since last May. You're just pounding out a, a kind of a trading range. But with the trend high as it is on the fixed three day and 100 day, my whole uh, scenario is you're building a bottom in here. Right. And uh, and so actually, let's, let's flip to the next chart. That okay. looks at the intermittent term. Okay. Is and I a have a messy chart. I don't know how may it, to make it really. No, it looks good. Light, but, it looks good, Tim. Yeah. All right. But funny how I'm, I'm back in the, uh, at the bottom window. Is this a little bit of shorter time frame right now? And the bottom one was a 10 day trend. Okay. And so every time the 10 day trend on the bigger time frames is 1.1. On the smaller time frames, like the 10 day, 1.2 seems to work well. And the, the shaded. Um, tan areas are shaded um, that looks like tan to me pink area I guess you might say it's times when the 10 day trend was right around 1.2 and so I did that if you notice all those shaded pink areas come in the price range which is I uh, shaded it light blue between 370 to approximately 400 Yes. so that tells me that whole area is a base area Right. Because you, you got panic since last May, every time it got into it at 370, which is a big trading range. But there's a bunch of panic in there. If that was opposite, say you had a trend reading, you get down around one, uh, point 0.8, which is that oh, green area, those green bars in there. Yes. If you notice, every time it got down there, you were near a high, like point 0.8. Yep. Well, we've been mostly down uh, above around 1.2. So we did have some declines every time we got down 10 days, down 1.8. You were probably near at least a short-term high. Uh, but in general, uh, we're, we're, with the, the panic that I'm considering in the market, uh, between 370 uh, to 400, we're just building a, a great big base here uh, for the market to rally in. If yeah, you look at just, today, just, keep, just, keep, just keep that thought for a second, because this is really cool. What he's saying, folks, okay, which is so cool, you know, is that the these it seems like there hasn't been panic here, but there has because of the amount of selling and the fact of the matter is we really we've been still been in a consolidation, not been going down. You stay right there, Tim and I are coming right back, folks. Dow's down one oh three, Nasdaq is off uh one twenty five, S P's down twenty, Tim and I are coming right back. Welcome back, folks. Uh, we're talking with our man, Mr. Tim Ord from the Ord Oracle, and you can reach Tim folks at Ord O R D dash oracle dot com and we're right now we're, we're at the, the shot we're on the second chart tim yeah we're on the second chart and what, what i'm trying to point out here is is the whole thing you know again if this a 10-day trend was uh we're awful close down to point point eight right now we're point yeah it looks like a point point eight eight that could be possibly a, a very sign short term but um, there's other statistics. I do a little bit of um, well, quantitative easing. I don't do it, but I ascribe to another guy that does. And uh, this is pre-election year. Pre-election year, the month of April is up 94% of the time. And also, if January is up, uh, which it was around 6%, April is up 88% of the time. So if you do the quantitative easing along with some analysis, this month should be an up month, you know, a high 90 percent percentile. So even though we got a 10-day trend close to uh, 0.80, uh, 
uh, if you notice, once these rallies start, the trends will actually get low and stay low for a while. But ultimately, they do lead to the big declines. But I'm thinking what's going to happen, we're going to see a sign of strength this month because we've got enough power in the 10-day trend over the since going back to last May uh, to push us higher. And if you do the measurements, in other words, you take the previous uh, you take the high and low of this trading range and you add it on to the breakout area. And if you do that, you come up with around 470. Yes. Well, 470 happens to be the January 2022 high. Right. And I'm thinking that's where we're going to go. Are we going to get get through that area? Uh, maybe, maybe not. We'll have to wait and see. But if the 100-day and 63-day trend is actually, say, around uh, below one or something, I say not. We're probably going up there and hit it and probably have a gigantic trading range. But if we go up there and the 10-day or the 100-day trend and the 60-day trend, to say it's still around 1.1, 1.2 area, I think we've got enough, you know, panic in the market for this rally to continue. So, but, you know, you got these big bases here. This base is a long base. It is a long it base. Like that's a, yes. Yeah. It's a long base, it's no doubt. Yeah. And, you know, you know I love, Tim, how you put this together. So what happens, folks, is this, is that, you know, when you really look at this market, okay, the bottom line, this is what to understand in the, the analysis, you know, it, it's a large consolidation right now until it's not. I mean, that's the bottom line, you know, so. Right. Um, you know, well, the, it, the, the longer the consolidation, the longer the rally. Is, yeah. That's my oh, point. interesting. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, so, yeah, you know, you, you got what you call, uh, you know, cause from white cop. Days, yes. You know, you got yep. longer the cause, longer the rally. Well, you know, you got all you got. Well, you got uh, 11 months of, of base building here. And in my opinion, you are going to break out to the upside because the six, three day, 100 day and also the 10 day suggest that's what's going to happen. And so this rally, you know, if the base is equal to the impulse wave, you know, that would imply your rally till year end or later. Uh, so I don't know. But. Uh, yeah, it'll blow some it, minds. It's perfect. <laughs> yeah, it, it yeah. could. And nobody, you know, everybody's, you know, kind of bearish on the market according to the panic. Oh, yeah, for here sure. Over the last I know. Year. Yep. So, so I'm thinking you can really surprise a lot of people if this thing starts to rally and it just keeps on going. So, you know. Which, we, which we've definitely there, seen. There's no doubt about that. So let's go to yeah. the next chart. Right. The, the other chart is um this is just a kind of a big time frame that i showed it i think a chart last thursday that uh showed that we're probably gonna have a rally for another year and a half from march which would be the the uh uh this indicator i i presented last time gave a buy signal back in march and the previous signals lasted a year and a half or longer and, and tim is talking about the gold market September now folks. 2024 yes um what I'm showing here is this is this is uh, the gold chart going back a long ways, looks like uh, what 1997 or something. Yes. But what I'm pointing out is we're up against a neckline, what I'm calling the neckline, and to get through that neckline, you're going to need a sign of strength. Right. And uh, if you look back, there's um, probably should have outlined it better, but I'm thinking this whole thing's a head and shoulders bottom. Yeah. And no, you're nearing I can see the that. neckline right now. The point is, the market's not going to get weaker. To get through that neckline, it has to show a sign of strength. So if anything, the market's going to actually going to get stronger coming short term. If you notice uh, last month, the month of March, if you look at that volume chart, because this is a monthly chart, you had a big bump up in volume showing that, you know, some strength is starting to show up. Right. So if we get through that 2000 level um, or 2021, uh you should see a, a a sign of strength through that level. A sign of strength is high volume, wide price move. So I'm thinking this gold market, you know, has, has been really difficult to trade over the last uh, several years here. But I'm, I'm thinking we're going to go back to like it was 2000. Uh, and actually, I was in the gold market back in 1980. Right. And uh, those those markets were fairly easy to trade to trade because. You were a genius because everything went up. Exactly. And, and we <laughs> could it. be entering yeah. another time frame for that, too. So I don't know. Uh, we'll wait and see. But everything has been kind of dead uh, in the gold market, you know, I don't know, 50, 
about 55% of the stocks in the gold market are rallying, which is about half the stocks. So I'm, I'm thinking that may turn around. But if we do see a sign of strength through that 2100 area, and you break out of this gigantic head and shoulders bottom, uh, I, I think you're going to see a lot of energy go to the market. Go, and you know it's interesting to today, market, Tim. It's been really dead. Yes, and and what has happened today, you know, Tim and folks, okay, you know, this dollar index, okay, uh, the bottom line is that, you know, I mean, it's down like 687 ticks, uh, but it's you know the low the low was established at a uh, hundred point eight. Uh, 100.62 and then we had a sign of strength off the bottom now it failed the sign of strength today you know where four to well only four ticks underneath it but it's been a straight line move down so if this thing blows away then <laughs> then that means that thing's going to happen right now it's going to be intriguing because because the the bounce the last bounce that we had in the dollar so check this out the bounce, last bounce we had in the dollar it could only do a um yeah it did a 0 0.382 that was it though from the highs to the lows. So, you know, it's mm. that's it's, it's going to get intriguing and hey, it could be right here right now. So, you yeah, gotta love I, it. I, I think it's really coming too. Uh, you notice that pink bar I drew right there on this chart? Yes. It, it, it's, uh, I so see it's, it. Yeah, yep. Pink shaded area. Yes. Well, you know, that sh shaded area is what I have a, down there is SOS on that volume side. Right. And that's a sign of strength. Right. Well, that there's a little head and shoulders bottom right where when that neckline was broken. Can you kind of see it there? Yes. And that, that now from last, from what, two Fridays ago. No, I'm with you. I know. I, yeah. Although no, this is gold. So this is different, but no, no, that was, well, that was the same Friday. I think that was a, that was a monster day, right? Yeah. Well, well no, I'm, I'm looking at the, uh, Oh no, I see uh, it now. I see it. I see it. I got it. Yeah. yeah. The, the shaded pink shade, shaded area. Yes. Well, when it, when it broke through that neckline of that smaller head and shoulders bottom, which is basically the head, of this larger head and shoulders bottom, it did have a, a sign of strength through that neckline. My point is that we're going to have something similar looking to that pink shaded area was coming right in front of us. I see. Probably in, uh, you know, in, in the weeks, if not months to, to come here. So I don't think this, this, this market is going to fail here. I think it's going to right, push right through that 2000 neckline, 2021 neckline. And in general, head up to the next higher target. So we'll have to wait. You gotta see. love it. Well, listen, Tim, you have a, a great week, a safe week. We look forward to speaking to you next Thursday. All right, sounds good. Thank Thanks you. for all your help, man. Really appreciate it. Stay right there, folks. We're coming right back.